Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we discussed all the bones of the feet, and we talked about some of the important joints between them. We mentioned one of those joints is the talocrural joint, so we're going to actually go into a lot of detail on that here in this video. So the talocrural joint is really a joint that lies between the talus inferiorly and then the ankle mortis above. To really get an understanding of this, we need to go to this picture right here. Look at this x-ray. This is an anterior x-ray of the person's right ankle. So this bone right here that I'm tracing out, this is the individual's talus. So that's really the most proximal and, and, and superior tarsal bone. Now sitting above that, we have two bones. We have the tibia right here. So the tibia is more medial in the lower leg. And then over here, this much thinner one is the fibula. Now, as we talked about in a previous video, the tibia and fibula are joined together in three places. Way up at the top, where you can't actually see, it's way off the image, we have the proximal tibiofibular joint. It's a joint between the tibia and the fibula. We can't see that, okay? That's actually up by the knee, more or less. Then we have an interosseous membrane that lies between the tibia and the fibula. Uh, that's just the middle tibiofibular joint, but it's really just this interosseous membrane. And now this joint right here, this is the distal tibiofibular joint. Okay, so we can see that. So the tibia and the fibula are joined down here physically. And that allows them to form this articular surface called the ankle mortis. Okay, so the ankle mortis is made up really of three parts. It's made up really of the medial border of the distal fibula. Now remember, the, the fibula is lateral, but this right here would be its medial border. Make sense? It's also made up of the lateral border of the medial malleolus of the tibia. So here's our tibia. This is the medial malleolus, and this is the lateral surface of the medial malleolus. Okay? And then we have the inferior part of the tibia, the distal tibia, which makes up the roof of the ankle mortis. So combined, all three of those components are the ankle mortis. And they sort of provide this uh, concavity in a plateau shape that accommodates the talus beneath it. Okay? Another thing that's also important is when we look at the ankle mortis, if we just consider the tibial part, so forget the fibula, just the tibial part. This is often called the tibial plafond. Tibial plafond. But that excludes the fibula. If we combine all three together, so the tibial plafond plus the medial border of the distal fibula, this whole thing would then be the ankle mortis. So just some differences in terminology. And then again, beneath that, is the talus. Now we'll talk about plantar flexion and dorsiflexion in a few minutes, but those are the movements of this joint right here, which is the talocurl joint. But what I need to mention right now is that the way the talus fits in the ankle mortis, it's tight throughout the entire range of motion of both plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. It's slightly tighter in dorsiflexion, but it's tight throughout the entire range of motion of the talocurl joint. And so uh, sometimes we will say that the talocurl joint is the most congruent joint in the entire human body. What does that mean? It means it's probably overall throughout its entire range of motion about the most stable. Why does that matter? Well, even though we have to have some mobility here, this joint better be stable because we're putting a huge percentage of our weight on it. Imagine standing on one foot. You take one of your legs completely out of the equation. Well, there's probably 95% of your weight on that joint right there. So that joint better be pretty stable. Okay, and so the talus fits snugly in that ankle mortis throughout the entire range of motion. It is extremely congruent. Okay? If we look at this view right here, um, here is our talocurl joint right there. It's also worth mentioning that there's a subtalar joint right here that's beneath the talus. Okay? So don't get these joints confused. Talocurl is between the talus and the ankle mortis above. The subtalar joint is just that. It is beneath the talus. It is subtalar, and it's between the talus and the calcaneus. Now, why do I mention this? Because we're going to be discussing the subtalar joint in the next video, but the movements allowed by the subtalar joint are very different than the movements allowed by the tail talocrural joint. 
And sometimes people will just say the ankle joint. Well, what is the ankle joint? These are both at the ankle, right? Well, the ankle joint is really just a composite term, and it really consists of both the talocural joint and the subtalar joint. So if we're being very specific, we can't really just say ankle joint, although some people do. You really need to say talocural or subtalar joint. But collectively, these are really both ankle joints. They both make up the ankle joint. They just allow different movements. So what kind of movement is allowed by the talocrural joint? Well, first of all, we need to understand it is a synovial joint, it's a diarthrosis. It's a hinge-type joint. Okay, so if you look down at your ankle, just for a minute, I'll show this video right here as well. To dorsiflex means you rotate your ankle in the sagittal plane such that really your foot points more toward your head. Okay? Plantar flexion is the opposite. You actually take your foot and point it more away from your head. Okay? A really good way to understand plantar flexion is if you've ever gone to the gym and you do calf raises or heel raises, whatever you want to call them. I mean, you can even do this standing up on the floor. So just go on your tippy toes. That movement of the ankle joint is plantar flexion. The opposite would be dorsiflexion. Now, if you're looking at those two movements, you ought to be able to tell which one has a greater range of motion. Just by observation, the one with the greater range of motion is plantar flexion. Okay? Plantar flexion has a range of motion about 50 degrees. Okay? Dorsiflexion is much more limited, and it has a range of motion only about 20 degrees. Okay? Um, dorsiflexion is actually the most stable position of the ankle joint, okay? really the talocrural joint. So overall, there's a lot less movement of the ankle joint when your talocrural joint is dorsiflexed. Okay? Um, that means that dorsiflexion of the talocrural joint is the talocrural joint's closed packed position. Okay? So much less arthrokinematic movement, much less mobility overall when you're in talocrural dorsiflexion. All right? Now, for plantar flexion, this is the open packed position of the ankle joint. Uh, so there's much more joint play, much more arthrokinematic movement, whatever you want to call it. Overall, much more mobility when you're in plantar flexion at the talocrural joint. Now, another thing that's worth mentioning is if you have loss of motion at the talocrural joint that follows a capsular pattern, you're going to have much more limited plantar flexion than dorsiflexion. Both will be limited, it's just that plantar flexion will be limited more. And remember uh, from previous videos, generally speaking, the motion of that joint that has the most range of motion normally will be the one that is limited more by a capsular pattern. This is no different. Plantar flexion has a greater normal range of motion than dorsiflexion. So if we have a capsular pattern of limited range of motion, then plantar flexion is going to be limited a little more than dorsiflexion. Okay, we're going to see the same thing eventually at the subtalar joint. It's also worth mentioning that there's blood supply to the talocrural joint. Um, they're supplied by malleolar branches of the fibular artery and also of the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. And also the joint is innervated, of course. It's innervated by the tibial nerve, so sensory branches of the tibial nerve, and the deep perineal nerve, which of course is a division of that common perineal nerve. Okay? So these are supplying the talocrural joint. Now it's also worth mentioning what muscles control movements at the talocrural joint. Well, if you're going into plantar flexion, again, you're doing a calf raise, it would make sense that it's muscles on your calf that are promoting that movement. And so the two major muscles that are gonna allow that are the gastrocnemius and the soleus. For plantar flexion, some sources will also say the plantaris muscle, but that muscle is so tiny, it likely doesn't contribute to movement. It really is more of a proprioceptive muscle so that your brain can determine where in space your talocrural joint is. Now, what muscles facilitate dorsiflexion? Well, there's really one major muscle, and that's tibialis anterior. Okay? However, you're going to get some contribution also from extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus, which also lie in that anterior leg compartment. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the talocrural joint. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.